What's up, everybody? Eric Lee, me here. You at, you're watching another episode of my uh, episode and video from my secondary YouTube channel vlog, in which I present to all of you my sentimental thoughts come from my heart and my soul, and my mental oddball shenanigans come from my mind and brain. This is EML 77 TV episode number 881. Uh, great, uh, great day in New England sports. First of all. The uh, Patriots picked up the victory over the Las Vegas Raiders. Weird to say that, right? You know, it's like you known as the Los Angeles Raiders, the Oakland Raiders, now Las Vegas Raiders. Who knew that Vegas will pick up two teams in the uh, in the four major sports? You know, the, the Golden Knights in hockey, um, and now the Raiders in the NFL and football. Uh, the 36 to 20 was the final score, bringing the Patriots to, to two and one, while the Bills picked up another victory. Gonna watch out for them Buffalo Bills. We know it, we know it's gonna be tough, and we know that they're gonna be a tough team. But I'll tell you one thing right now: I don't expect, uh, I I do not expect uh, the Bills to go undefeated. But the Patriots will catch up and probably take the division. But we'll, we'll, we don't know for sure what what will happen in, um, in in between. In the meantime, between time though, and the Red Sox have a huge eight to one lead going into the bottom of the seventh over the Atlanta Braves. So our New England teams are doing pretty well so far. And this is a I think this this game I'm watching here is the uh, final game of the season of the regular season. Ron Renneke will not be coming back to manage the Red Sox next yeah, so I just hear it just now. There Ron Renneke will not be coming back as the Red Sox manager next year. And so will will that mean will that open the door for Alex Cora to come back? We don't know. I really don't know. Is something um, that's uh, Chain uh, Chain Bloom uh, will be the chief baseball officer for the Red Sox. Will work on that young kid. I think might be a little bit of Theo Epstein a little bit. So we'll see what happens. Uh, see what the, what the front office Red Sox plan for the team in the future because of COVID and everything else. <clears throat> and that could be another certain uh, certain thing too, is the age and all that. And we don't know if this pandemic is going to end anytime soon. So that's another thing that I'm, you know, another issue that I have. Um, that, 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 they're going to, that I have. That, that they're going to have. So we don't know when or where. So it's something to, um, you know. And it's... Uh, And it's, it's it is it has been a tough year for the Red Sox, obviously, these past couple of years. And um, ever since the championship victory team, when we lo- we lose Mookie Betts, we lose we lose Mookie Betts to free agency. He went with the Dodgers. No, we traded we traded him. That's right. We traded Mookie Betts. So <clears throat> we lose him. We lose Sale. We lose Eduardo Rodriguez. So you know, most of our pitching staff and everything else. So it is something to uh, consider for next year. What the, what the Red Sox pl- uh, front office plans will be? It is um, it's been a surreal year. Obviously, we will um, guys. We, we can't be ashamed. I mean, even though we should be, but with everything going on, it's to be expected. You know, it's it's not. You know, <clears throat> and another thing too that um, that's not, that's another thing to consider. So we will see what happens um, for next year. For next season, and we'll see how things go. Um, also, uh, two couple of matches for Clash of Champions are not going to happen tonight. The, um, the first one was Bailey versus Nikki Cross for the SmackDown Women's Championship. Um, rumor has it, there's a rumor going around that Nikki Cross got hurt. We will see. And then, <clears throat> but you never know with, with everything going on this year. I want you know. You gotta think about that. Another match not happening is the WWE Women's Tag Team Championship as Shayna Baszler and Nia Jax were supposed to defend the titles against the Riot Squad. That match is also not happening either, and that's something to um, so could be a COVID-related situation. They say someone in the match had COVID. We will find out for sure how they're gonna go about it. And we still have 24/7 title um, yet to be mentioned. I know it's gonna be on the line somehow. And will they move the match Asuka versus Lena Vega to the main card? We will see what happens. Um, 
So, so yeah, this this year has you know the pandemic has really flipped everything around in sports. So it's it's something that um it's something that we you know we consider you know a lot of things are going to happen. A lot of players are going to opt out and all this good stuff. And uh, it's happening in all sports and um. Sometimes we get we get very concerned about whether or not our teams are going to be successful or not. You know, don't be angry if our teams are not winning or anything like that. I, I'm not angry that the Red Sox had a, a losing season because it was suspected we all losing all our pitching and all stuff. <clears throat> you know, I'm not. You know, I'm very disappointed how the year went. I mean, don't get me wrong. It's, the pandemic has really changed a lot, and so uh, changed a lot of things. And unfortunately, you know. There's nothing we could do, you know. There's nothing we can do but make sure we stay alive, and that's very, very important. <clears throat> Anyways, yeah, and I think also politics have something to do with it. You know, it has a factor going into this thing too. I, th- I think you know, I personally feel that this whole thing is, is has a political factor because 2020 was an election year. So, <clears throat> and if they, if the politicians are are using this to Sway our voting, and then I think it's this downright row that we had to sacrifice our regular lives just to uh, just to you know worry about this, and just to blame blame on a, a political official. I think it's really stupid on their part. It's like you know, to me, all politicians are acting like little children who don't get their own way, and they start crying, whining, stumping their feet, losing their temper. You know. And a lot of people are, there, there are a lot of people are like that, you know, and that's the thing too, it's, um, you hear on the internet, listen, I had to put up with it for four years here on YouTube, and, you know, all it is is that these trolls are nothing but a bunch of little spoiled, uh, act like a bunch of, uh, spoiled little brats that want things to be done their own way, it's like, it's a, if it's our way or we're gonna keep harassing you until you co- you comply with our demands and all that. You know, it's like they're trying to hold me hostage. Like I'm going to listen to these idiots. You know what I'm saying? You know, I, I personally am sick and tired of listening, listening to uh, dumb idiots that don't know me, that don't know me from the home of the wall. You know, I'm tired of it. You know, I try to be kind, I try to be nice, and I try to be try to be reasonable. You know, say, hey, this, listen, this is my thing, this is who I am. And yet, do they want to keep harping on me for it? Guess what? You're going to get blocked. I really don't care no more. You know, the fact of the matter is, my attitude is this. I'm sick of it. I'm sick of being ridiculed. I'm sick of being humiliated. And I'm sick of people uh, disrespecting me for whatever reason. I really don't care. I'm done. I'm done. I try to be nice. I try to be reasonable. I'm done being those things. You know, people don't like it. You know, they can they can go cry somewhere else. I really don't care. Um, I'm at that point in my life where I'm just going to do my show, do my thing, and everything else. And um. You know, immature children. That's all. That's all. That's why I feel like I'm dealing with immature children, even though they're not immature children. They're, they're probably grown folks who act like immature children, and it's like, I'm like, no, it's enough. That's enough. I'm moving on. I really don't care anymore. I really don't care. Troll like comments get blocked on the on the on the spot. Personally, that's that's how I feel. Anyways, so. So it is the final weekend of September. That means this coming weekend will be October. Now I'm sure a lot of things are going to change. And I don't know how the holiday season is going to play out. That's one thing that you know. That's one thing that's a major, major concern. And with the pandemic going on, I don't know how the mall is going to. Uh, uh. Uh. Um, I don't know how the mall is going to uh, uh, deal with this per, per se. Um, I know I work in the morning, and that's a you know. But what if uh, the snow comes around and we and we want the mall open? I personally think that the mall should be closed during snow days. That way, people don't have to get out and you know they don't have to go anywhere and all that good stuff, and we don't have to worry about you know. Going out in the cold and shoveling snow and all that. That's my personal opinion. I'm just saying. You know, I, you know, that's why this pandemic is really going to be hitting the holiday season pretty hard, I think. You know, and I know we depend on, you know, the money and everything else, but, you know, and, 
it's something it's something to um consider and I may have to do a lot of things and may, may I may have to make a lot of decisions in this one. But the good news is many of the major uh, major department stores like Target, Macy's and Walmart they're closing on Thanksgiving. They're not they're not even opening up for Black Friday, so that's gonna and that could be another reason why too, um I think the pandemic because if you try to go open anything on Black Friday, you're gonna be have a lot of overcrowded people inside that mall. And a lot of people, you know, no social distancing and all, all that. I think, unfortunately, I hate to say this, but the government may have to crack down on that for Black Friday shopping. How that's going to be affected, I really don't know. But um, one thing for sure is, well, for right now, we're not going to worry about anything. We're just going to keep going, keep doing the thing, and then, <clears throat> and and most the only time I do a, do a lot of shopping is um, when I go out and try to get some groceries or anything like that, and you know, or get gas and. Or, and stuff like that. So it's personally. <clears throat> so that's something. To, that is something to uh, consider. Um, but for right now, I'm enjoying my. You know, I'm trying to relax. Uh, I'm trying to. I'm trying to. I'm trying to personally relax and have a good time, have a good day. You know, have a good life. And just yeah, a lot of things have been difficult. A lot. A lot of things have been challenging and very difficult. Even for the past couple of years for me and my family, but we'll be okay. And, um, uh, I'm very, very confident in that. Um, one more thing. Uh, one more thing before I get off, uh, here, cause I'm gonna watch the kickoff show for the Clash of Champions. Um, as you know, this coming Tuesday, September 29th, 2020, will mark the 40th anniversary of one of my personal favorite game shows in my, when I, since I was a kid, in my life, since I was a kid growing up. Had the most unique set ever. It was called Bullseye. It was hosted by Jim Lang. And how am I going to pay tribute to that, or you know, or not tribute, just to, to commemorate this? I should say, uh, I will be talking about the show and what I'll tell them what my favorite bulls, my favorite bullseye moment is, and all that. And um, you now my top fav- uh, five favorite bullseye moments, and um, what I liked about it, and everything else, and how I first was introduced to the show, um, you know, and all that good stuff. And, um, and why I like it so much, you know, and that's another thing too. Then I'm going to go uh, to the Flash game shows and play the a 20 round Flash game show regular bonus island. I'm going to have a little bit of fun with that. And then I will do a musical pictorial tribute with some new bullseye pictures I have, and uh, that's what I'm going to do. And um, a little bit of tribute. So that, that's, that's, the, I'm going to try to put all that together. I'm going to start with the bad project tomorrow. And that's another thing that we're going to do. So I'm going to have some fun there. So, that's all the time we have. I, I have on the show for you guys. Episode 81 is complete. Um, 119 episodes ago from, to uh, 1,000. And uh, we're just going to have... You know, I'm just going to try to keep going on. And the uh, final weekend of September... Uh, like I said, the Patriots did pick up a victory, 36 to 20 over the Las Vegas Raiders, and the Red Sox have an 8 to 1 lead in the top of the eighth right now. We're trying to watch the game, final game of the regular season. Like I said, the pandemic has changed sports, changed everything. So I know it's been an underwhelming season with the Red Sox. We're sure, hopefully, everything you know, we're hoping to get everything back to normal, but we don't know when that's going to be, and we're going to deal with the new normal, which is driving us crazy, personally. So here we go. So I am going to um, get out of here. I'm going to watch the kickoff of uh, Clash of Champions, and we'll see what happens. All right? I'll see you guys later. Have a wonderful day, and uh, keep your heads up, guys. Peace.